Alrighty guys, welcome back. In today's video, we'll be starting a new three-part build series. I will be releasing these three videos one week apart from each other, so make sure to subscribe to the channel in order to get notified when they drop. I'm really starting to get more comfortable with this knife construction style, and I want to make sure to have the time required to give detailed narration. Down the road, I'll likely also post a video of this full build to music for those who don't like the sound of my voice. I'll also be putting this knife up for sale on my website towards the end of this series and will notify my patrons on Patreon ahead of time so that they have a competitive buying lead. The drawings and associated CAD files for this knife will also be available for my patrons. With all that housekeeping out of the way, I'll get on to the narration. I hope you all enjoy this build and if you have any comments or questions, don't hesitate to ask them by dropping a comment down below. A few of my more observant viewers may have noticed some of this Damascus billet making footage is being reused, and that is because this is the same piece I used for the blades in my recent Fantasy Challenge knife. I was in a mad hurry during that build and made a low layer count twist billet on the fly one morning. While it is far from the most intricate design, I really do like how the final product turned out and it came in nice and bold. I started forging out this blade by hammering in the tip. A buoy with a clip is my final target and I found that shaping the billet like a viking sax before hammering in the bevels works pretty good. The tip will start moving up towards the center of the billet as the bevels are hammered in. I also put a little curve into the blade in the direction of the edge so that as the bevels are being formed the knife blade will come up and be straight. Once I have it roughed in on the blade end, I use my DIY hot cut hardy in the anvil and cut off the rest of the billet. This cut off piece is later what became the two blades in my fantasy knife build. I found that a flattening die on top and a drawing die on the bottom in my hydraulic press does a good job at pressing in my ricasso. With the ricasso set, I use the press to shape down my tang shoulders as well. To get a quick and dirty anneal on the blade, I let it cool slowly in an ammo can full of vermiculite. This will make grinding, drilling, and filing easier before heat treatment. I leveled out the blade on my DIY surface grinding attachment. This gives me some nice flat surfaces to work with and gets me to clean steel in the Mercasso area. Using my X-Tool laser, I cut out the blade template I'm looking for on this knife. If y'all are interested in this machine, I'll put the Redbeard Ops affiliate link in the video description. So far, I'm really enjoying having it in my shop, and you'll see that I use it multiple times during this build, especially when making the sheath. With the template laid out on the blade, I ground in the profile and roughed in my bevels to a 36 grit finish on my Northridge 2x72 belt grinder. Taking some practice, but using the work rest grinding method with a Teflon push stick has really become my favorite grinding technique. With forge scale on the blade, the push stick can become a little caught here and there, but once you have it smooth, life is easy. I used a file and my file guide to rough in the shoulders. However, I did end up going back to clean these up with the mill after heat treatment. I start off the heat treating process by running some normalizing cycles and eventually quenching in parts 50. For those of you who've been asking about how my heat treating oven has held up, I gotta say it's been awesome to have. So far, I'm extremely happy with my decision to build my own. With a hardened blade, I clamped it between some pieces of angle iron and ran two two-hour tempering cycles at 420 degrees Fahrenheit. After tempering, I cleaned up the blade on my surface grinding attachment. I like to check to make sure that the ricasso is pretty flat and parallel before moving on. I measured the top and bottom of my ricasso and got a variance of 9 ten thousandths of an inch with my micrometer. 
The flat ricasso allowed me to throw this piece on the disc grinder and make sure that the spine is square to the ricasso. Having a flat ricasso with a spine square to it really helps with the layout process on knives like this one. I then ground the blade up to a 120 grit finish on the work rest. At this point I noticed some flaws in the Damascus layers, but I had more grits to work up, so we'll just keep an eye on it. Using the Kyle Royer style waterfall platen and a 120 grit J-Flex belt, I roughed in the symmetry on my plunges. It may be tough to see here, but I used a file guide before this step in order to scribe in some plunge line targets on both sides of the Ricasso. With everything up to a 120 grit finish, I head on over to my disc grinder with 320 grit paper on it. I built this grinder recently as a kit from Bex Armory, and if I remember, I'll put a link to the build video in the cards above. At 320 grit, you can still see some of the flaws in the Damascus, but they have diminished. I then threw a 320 grit J-Flex belt onto my waterfall platen and got to work finishing up the plunge grinds. At this point in the process, it's time to test out the blade, and boy am I happy that I did. I'll go a little more into the details in a few minutes, but the edge was ground very thin on this blade. It came out cutting like a razor blade, but there really wasn't much beef behind that edge to act as a support. I performed the standard 2x4 chop with this knife, as well as a tip, stab, and pry. The tip did well, however the edge had some significant rollover. At this point I was pretty worried about the project and thought that the blade could be scrapped, but decided to grind back the issue and see if I could retest it. After grinding back the rolls, I ended up with around 20 thousandths of an inch behind the edge. In the second round of testing, I was significantly more aggressive with my swings. My intention was to make for darn sure that this blade didn't have an issue. I cut through the 2x4 once, and then proceeded to cut through another one with a batoning method. If I'm going to be spending days of my life finishing out this blade, I want to know at this point if this is going to be worth it or not. Alright, so we survived round two of the chopping. You can see that with a thicker edge, I had no deformation. The original issue was not a heat treating issue, it was a extremely thin edge issue. I actually ground it all the way down to zero, and it was very slicey, but it wasn't very tough. So as y'all saw, I took that edge off, I left around 20 thousandths behind the edge, and then resharpened to get this geometry, did the chopping for a second time, and had no issues. It made it through the two by four, and as y'all saw, I wasn't extremely gentle with it. I was trying to get as aggressive as possible, or as least as possible as I could be. So with that success, I think that we can move on with the build. It is not scrap, which I was actually afraid of at first. It has a slightly narrower profile than I originally intended, but I do still think that it can make a fine knife. So we are going to keep on going with the build. With the testing out of the way, I start working up the blade finish. Normally I do all of this work with Rhino Wet Sandpaper, but I have been inspired by Trollski on YouTube to try out some stones. 
I picked up some stones from Falcon to start playing around with, and I worked up from a 220 grit to a 600 grit stone. All right, so some initial thoughts on the sanding stones. It looks like it's done a pretty good job at getting uh, what looks like a 600 grit finish on here. It's a little different to use, it's taken a little time to get used to, but you can apply a good deal of pressure if you're using the edge. And I actually kind of like how the edge rounded over here, flattened out or chamfered. I kind of hope it continues to do that because uh, a little bit more of a flat surface here at an aggressive angle uh, gives you gives you a ton of pressure. I'm gonna go back over this with sandpaper and bring it all the way up to the 600. It's, it's supposedly at a 600 right now, but I'm curious on how the sandpaper uh, differs. There are a few scratches in here that I missed that I'll clean up with the sandpaper, but I think what this allows me to do is to save on sandpaper first and foremost, and second of all, probably move through the grits a little faster since I can apply so much more pressure with the stone. So yeah, I haven't timed it. Uh, maybe I'll do that in the future, but I think these can speed things up a little bit and then you can come back and do your final passes uh, with whatever grit sandpaper you want. All right, so that's all I'm gonna cover in part one. In part two, I'll be starting on the guard and front spacer. This will be the first time I'm using wrought iron on a knife, so I hope y'all will be excited to see how that goes. If you like this video series so far, make sure to hit the like button down below and if you're not already, please consider subscribing to the channel. Until next time, I'll catch y'all on the flip side.